<sighs> Let's see if it works this time. So I'm at, apparently OBS is having a little bit of an encoding problem right now on my computer. I'm trying to fix it the best I can, but for now, I think what it might have been is that the amount of images I had was like overloading it or something like that. So I'm going to have to do round two without images as well. Now, luckily, to kind of mitigate that, I will not be putting my face on the screen to be blocking anyone's uh, actual view of <laughs> Who's going to be viewing me? Pardon me. Uh, but, um, yeah, so I'll, I'll go from top to bottom like I normally do, and I'll just be quick about it this time around. So, uh, Edward Ulrich, or Ulrich, or I, did, I, did, I did Eric Ul Edward, but it's Edward Ulrich uh, versus Ben Tennyson. When you do a Death Valley with Ben Ten, you're ultimately basically saying, it's this person versus Alien X. That's what you're basically saying. And so, can Edward beat Alien X? No, he cannot. He does not have the power on any level to beat Alien X. Very few people do, though. So, it's that's not his fault. Uh, so, yeah, that went to Ben 10. The meta versus Batman. The meta's armor in uh, tech are very powerful and could take down Batman if they could... Uh, if, the, if he ultimately ended up hitting him. The problem is Batman has fought many individuals of, of a similar form to, um, you know, the meta. So, I would honestly give that to Batman because he would eventually wear down the meta, who is very easy to wear down, ultimately. He's... he's Gonna expend his weaponry, uh, you know, lose the power in his suit pretty quick. So I go actually Batman in that fight. she versus Jack and Daxter. It ultimately came down to pretty much sheer power versus versatility. Jack and Daxter definitely had the versatility on their side. But um, she is more, it certainly has the raw power. The question is, did Jack and Daxter actually have anything that could... Uh, physically take on She-Ra, like, take her down. And I really couldn't think of anything they actually had where it was going to be something that could take She-Ra down permanently. Like, they don't have the actual power, I think, to put She-Ra down for it, sadly. So, I went She-Ra in that fight. Uh, the Tiger's Zord versus Sonic. Sadly for the Tiger's Zord against Sonic's Super Form, there's little they can actually do. There, Sonic's Super Form is unfortunately, and maybe this will help too, I'm going to actually turn my volume down slightly. Um, yeah, oh, actually, that seems to be helping a little bit. Uh, so if you can still hear me, great. I mean, it, I didn't turn it down a lot, I turned it down just enough. Um, but yeah, it, that's the problem. Is Tigers will eventually have to go up against Sonic's Super Form, and yeah, there's not much you can do against the Super Form. Sonic wins that fight. Thor versus Mario! Yeah, that's kind of the opposite, where Mario does not have anything that can th take on Thor. I mean, yeah, he becomes invincible for a little while, so he's got a super form that, and it hurt, like, instantly takes out most opponents. But Thor is not most opponents. Thor can go toe to toe with a Galactus. Well, it's gone toe to toe with the Silver Surfer, Galactus, killed Sentry before. Uh, Mjolnir, one shot from Mjolnir, Mario is screwed. Yeah, no, this is a snare where Mario cannot win, sadly. Uh, Boo versus Carnage is interesting. They're both characters that have very similar attributes. Psychotic, love to destroy, metamorphosis, uh, or excuse me, shape-changing, shape-shifting, uh, healing factor. But only one has the ability to completely take out the other, and that goes to Boo. Boo can literally annihilate planets and solar systems with his freaking finger. And Carnage, as vicious as he is, really only has melee abilities, and honestly, worst case scenario, Boo just absorbs Carnage. That's all he does. Um, so, yeah, that one goes to Boo. Hulk versus Miles, I don't think anyone's really contest that. In a death battle, fight to the death, Miles would lose that fight. There's no way he can take down the Hulk. There just isn't. So, yeah, that, that, that one goes to the Hulk. It's likewise, Doctor Strange versus Jake Long, that goes to Doctor Strange. Again, I don't think anyone's really going to be uh, contesting that. Uh, Daredevil versus Glacius. That one was interesting. If we're talking about 1v1 and the and the um, Killer Instinct game franchise, well, then, of course, Daredevil could win because anyone can beat anyone in the game franchise. Like, Street Fighter. Akuma can lose to... Well, Akuma could lose to Dan Hibiki in Street Fighter if you play the character right. That's, that's how games work. Um, but if we're talking about, like, in lore and all that stuff, I do think it'd be Glacius who takes the fight. Hulk certainly, uh, Hulk, Daredevil certainly has a few advantages. His senses are more heightened. Uh, he's got weaponry that could theoretically shatter Glacius, but it's not like he's fighting Sub-Zero, where Sub-Zero actually had true superhuman strength, durability, abilities, uh, everything along those lines. It, it's, no, it's just Daredevil is a very skilled individual, uh, and I think Glacius could uh, take him by surprise by, like, freezing the landscape and 
you know, putting him in a scenario where he's going to have to fight uh, or he can't fight anymore. So I go uh, Glacius in that. Wonder Woman versus Venom. Venom's a tough guy. Uh, he's got, you know, he can he possess if he needs to, shape shift like the uh, um, Carnage can, uh, super strength in the upper tens of tons, possibly hundreds of tons area. Um, then you have um, his ability to um, uh, think words here. Uh, survive, uh, well, I mean, he's got a weakness to sound, but he's got now a, a resistance, uh, he's, he's, he's a very powerful individual, but Wonder Woman's physicality, strength, skill, uh, swordsmanship, I think really do just completely one-up him, uh, in most ways, and honestly, her, I keep calling them bracelets, not bracelets, bracers, uh, her gauntlets, if you will, uh, are, can create a sonic wave that can basically knock an opponent completely out. And then if you go up against an individual who's already weak to sound, it could be a serious problem, which it could very well would be for Venom. So I go Wonder Woman in that fight. Starscream versus Cloud, Strife. That one for me, it's one of those scenarios where Starscream could theoretically kill Cloud one shot if you could find him. But Cloud's a smart fighter, has fought large monsters before. Um... He's skilled, got a, mega, a serious uh, large sword. He could hide in Starscream's blind spots, which we know there are, because his sensors are located basically in his eyes, and because he has eyes. Uh, so all he has to do is sneak up on him and eventually stab him like in the neck or head, something like that, take the head off, uh, and then basically try to take out the spark if he could, which is, I guess, possible, um, given the, his materia and all that. We don't know how indestructible Starscream's spark actually is, though we assume it pretty much is indestructible uh goku uh, goku versus ryo hayabusa uh busa that one i don't think anyone's gonna argue goes to goku uh we have captain america versus uh luigi luigi's skill of physical strength is um i think underplayed to some degree i think he's actually probably stronger than cap surprisingly uh can leap probably higher because he's the higher leaper and you know he has lightning powers he has that weird negative void he has his weird vacuum however cap is still a super soldier still skilled fighter has honestly better equipment the shield alone is probably better than anything luigi actually has in terms of actual um equipment and yeah i think cap would actually take that fight uh ichigo versus tifa lockhart I, that one goes to ichigo in my mind his power output is far beyond anything she has where he's a master swordsman, just as a guild of fighter, quite frankly, in my opinion. Uh, super speed, high durability, and hybrid form with Hollow and um, Quincy and Shinigami form to go with that. Yeah, for me, that's Ichigo. Uh, Urza versus Twilight Sparkle. For me, the only reason Twilight wins this uh, is the fact she can turn Urza into a plant, and if she does that, then there's nothing Urza can actually do. Uh, it isn't like Raven, who had a separate entity in her soul self that was able to, um, you know, attack on her behalf so that one goes to twilight sparkle for me namor versus bayonetta namor's got the physical advantages durability and uh strength wise but the longer he's out of the water the weaker he's actually going to get uh his you know his trident is very useful but bayonetta's literal arsenal alone outmatches anything he has um plus her witch time is enough that she would be able to pretty much avoid most of his serious attacks Add on the fact she can summon, uh, summon Madame Butterfly, or Madama Bl Butterfly, full demon. I Namor loses that fight, in my opinion. Thanos versus Archie Sonic. Thanos with the Infinity Gauntlet versus Archie Sonic. Now, let's be very clear. If this were an actual fight, he would beat Sonic well before he ever got to his hyper form. Well before. He just, like, click, gone. That's it. However, we are looking at the fight if he goes to his hyper form. Now, I do think you'd see a scenario where Thanos would steal a Sonic Speed, basically stop him in his tracks. Um, but uh, if you're talking about Sonic's abilities to warp reality versus the Infinity Gauntlet's abilities to warp reality, I'm going more with the Infinity Gauntlet. The Infinity Gauntlet has displayed far more than, uh, than what Ga Sonic is actually cap uh, than Sonic has, because it's just had a longer history. That's the problem, is that we've seen the Infinity Gauntlet pretty much be able to do anything. Uh, and on a much grander scale. Sonic also needs to, like, you know, work up that energy to, uh, you know, work up and focus on what he wants to do. He's got wish powers, basically. But the problem is, uh, Thanos doesn't need to do that. Thanos can just focus, and it's done. He could even rob Sonic of all that power if he wanted to. Like, the Chaos Emeralds are just energy. They're just power. He could just rob that instantly. So, immediately take him out of his hyperform if he really wanted to. Um... So, yeah, I actually, I go with Thanos on that fight. Sorry for all you Archie Sonic fans. 
Uh, Metal Sonic versus Captain Marvel. That one, to me, is, goes more to Captain Marvel. Metal Sonic's definitely tough and probably would be a little difficult for Captain Marvel uh, for a while. But ultimately, he doesn't have the durability or sheer raw power to take her down. Add on the fact that even though he does have Chaos Control, he's not really uh, perfect with it. Uh, he's... Um, he doesn't have a great grasp of control on it. Uh, it really means that he's got no clear-cut way of taking Captain Marvel down for good. So I go Captain Marvel in that fight. Sailor Galaxy versus Crash Bandicoot. I think Crash is the OG here. Crash will totally be, you know, the Universal Destroyer. Obviously, it's Galaxia. There's no way Crash would come close to taking her down. Uh, it's, yeah, Sailor Galaxia. Sigma versus Kratos is actually a very interesting one because neither of them have really anything that truly puts the other down per se. Um, but um, because uh, Kratos, because remember, Sigma ultimately is just is a virus. He's he's got no real physical form. He just takes a physical form like an like Ultron does. He just possesses a robot that just happens to look the same every time. Kratos doesn't have anything, though, that can take down a computer virus, a sentient computer. He doesn't have anything for that. Sigma, though, also struggles because he doesn't really have... I don't think he has really any raw power enough to take down Kratos. Um, now, that being said, I mean, if we're talking about a long-haul fight, I think the actual winner, then, will be Sigma. Because in a scenario you have to set up for the death battle... Sigma's got to have other machines he can possess, which means he can continue to spam the lasers and hit Kratos for a good long while. Kratos, for all of his demigodness, is still technically mortal. He still can be killed. It should take a lot to do it. And I think Sigma, it would take a long time in this fight to do it, but I think he would ultimately wear Kratos down and get the killing blow in. So I go Sigma on that. Ganon versus Ragna is also actually a pretty interesting one, and a close one, I think. But I give it to Ganon simply because we know, and this is with you, one of those times where that's, okay, so sorry about that noise. That was my buyer's protection kind of kicking in. Um, I have a vast, and unfortunately, it's a very loud and annoying uh, machine, <laughs> a very loud and annoying uh, computer thing. I was wondering why it didn't pop up when I turned the computer on earlier. Um, maybe that was the problem I was having earlier. But um, anyway, okay, so close all. And we're just going to go away now. And hopefully it shouldn't pop up again. Um, <clears throat> but um, yeah, so I do like the fact they kind of more or less, uh, not not definitively said, obviously, but um, more or less gave you the general idea how much power Ganon actually had because it made sense. The goddess Din is the, it was from, the Triforce of Power is from the goddess Din who created the Earth, which means Din's power is probably on a planetary level. So Ganon has probably a planetary's worth worth planetary's level worth of power in him from the Triforce of Power. That makes logical sense. Uh, Ragna, from what we can tell from the beast that he ultimately turns into, well, is a planetary threat. Think of it like this: Ghidorah is a planetary threat from like Le Godzilla, King of the Monsters, but he doesn't have the ability to just straight out, at least in King of the Monsters, to just straight out destroy the planet from like Sphinx or anything like that. Some versions of Ghidorah do. Um, but um, he's still a planetary threat. I feel like that's the same with Ragnar's beast form. It's a planetary level threat. It's just not a planetary level's worth of power. Whereas Ganon's is. Plus, both of their uh, arsenals can pretty much kind of counter each other to some degree. Though Ganon probably has a bit more of an up, um, uh, up, up, whatever <laughs> advantage is what I was trying to say. Um, so because he actually uses legitimate magic. So. I'd go Ganon in that fight. Mob Psycho versus Sasuke. Psychic abilities would be a problem for Sasuke. It's not something the Naruto-verse usually goes into. Uh, but Sasuke is a trained ninja. He also has his... It's Rin Sharingan. Screw that. I always call this Sharingan. Uh, which allows him to teleport, which means he could easily get the drop on Mob. And he's a trained ninja and Susano and Amaterasu, which his psychic abilities would not be able to immediately counter because Sasuke's just got to look at the son of a bitch. So, yeah, Sasuke wins that fight. Rock Lee versus Raiden from Mortal Kombat is, it's interesting. Rock Lee actually, I think, does overtake him in terms of sheer speed, but his Elder God physiology and lightning abilities, I think, would be enough to wear Lee down to the point where even if Lee goes into its final form, Raiden could just kind of, you know, pop out of the teleport out of there uh, and kind of just let Lee take himself down. I, I think it would be tough for Raiden, don't get me wrong. 
He's a competent enough martial artist, though, to be equal to Lee. So it would be it'd be an interesting fight, but I go Raiden in that fight. Pitt versus Gundam. This is one of those scenarios where I actually don't think the whole hiding in the blind spot works because the Gundam, the pilot of the Gundam, as the original Gundam, had basically like a precognition kind of uh, system. Not like Epion does, where it actually can see into the future to some degree, but more in the sense that he can sense where the, his opponent's going to end up. So really, even though Pitt's very small and fast, he can still pinpoint him, hit him with a laser, and you know, or hit him with his laser sword, his lightsaber-esque weapon, and put him down. So I would go uh, Gundam in that fight. Kakashi versus Zelda, for me, that even with the Triforce of Knowledge, Sword Skills, Archery, and a little bit of magic he has, that's Kakashi all the way. Uh, Sharingan Genjutsu, ta Taijutsu, Ninja Trickery, you know, Headhunter Jutsu, Mange Kero, Sharingan, yeah, Kakashi, I feel like, really easily takes that. Cable versus Virgil was actually interesting. Physically speaking, Virgil's got the edge. Healing Factor, Yamato, what is tech, or was uh, weaponry, uh, sheer, sheer skill. He's got the edge over Cable there, but the problem is Cable is a psychic and a very powerful psychic of that. He can possess, or possess, he can take over minds if he needs to, and Virgil has been um, subject to that before, if I'm not mistaken. So, unfortunately for Virgil, that one I feel like has got to go to Cable, because Cable, when, he, when, it re when you break it down, Cable would be forced to, you know, cause his mind to, like, explode, or whatever. He, he'd mess up his mind. So, ultimately, I, I gotta go Cable in that fight, 100%. Uh, Gamera versus uh, Jotaro Jostar. That one... See, here's the problem. The world is a very powerful stand. It's capable of, like, the time skip freeze and all that, or time freeze. I can't remember exactly what the power was. But the problem is he's fighting a, a couple hundred... Several story tall, giant plasma breathing, eating... 10,000 ton flying space turtle of death. Let's, let's for a moment say that Gamera fires a fireball at him. Um, Stan gets in the way to block, but you, he can only block so much. Pl fire is, is very fluid in its form. Plasma is very fluid in its form. So it's just going to, whatever plasma, you know, doesn't uh, manage to get stopped, he's just going to wrap around like the, uh, the world and hit Joe. So there's a problem right there. And then add on to the fact that Joe really doesn't have much to put down Gamera. In fact, he doesn't really have anything. I mean, yeah, he's just, oh, 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 all day long, but worst case scenario, Gamera's just got to feed on some fire or some of the plasma from the atmosphere, and he's good. Um, there's this, this is one of those fights where, yeah, he might just end up grabbing, um, you know, Joe Star, just taking him into space and launching him and just popping him in the vacuum of space. So I go Gamera on that fight. Uh, Lobo versus Darth Vader. Well, I'd like to see Vader go a little farther in the fight. That one goes Lobo pretty much because Vader has literally nothing to put Lobo down. A lightsaber, yes, it can cauterize a wound. Doesn't really do much against Lobo who can grow himself back from a drop of blood. Uh, and Lobo's physical strength is far beyond that of Vader's. Jedi Mind Trick's not going to work on him. Force choking isn't going to matter. He'll just heal from that. Yeah, there's nothing Vader can do to put Lobo down, sadly. Uh, Weiss versus Genos, I think because Genos is actually, his bread and butter is melee combat, um, and he has just as much, if not more, firepower than Weiss, and he's quite, he's very much faster than Weiss, too. I'd have to go Genos in that fight. No, no real questions asked. Finally, Gara versus Bowser. For me, that one goes to Gara. While it was very much in contention whether or not I think Ace or Gara would have won, I gave it to Gara there because I think it'd snuff out the flames, kind of suffocate it. Bowser, it's not, it's really not that hard for me to uh, choose uh, Gar in this fight because he can continually feed, uh, create more sand. Giants, massive sand burial, will just completely crush Bowser. Even if Bowser survives that or survives that, Gar, he's so big, Gar can get sand in his body and start ripping him apart with sand in his body. Um, add on gold dust that's used in that in his combat. Gar is Gar is a pretty powerful individual. Uh, Bowser's no no slouch, and he'd certainly be a giant monster, but Gar has gone up against, you know, uh, actually, he's never fought a tail beast, now that I say it out loud, but he's gone up against giant monsters, or giant, like, kaiju S before, uh, you know, giant, uh, summonings, things along those lines. It's not like Gara isn't used to giant monsters on some level like Bowser, so ultimately, I would go Gara in that fight. That is the end, though, of round two. Now, hopefully... 
next time around, I'll have uh, I'll, I'll have this whole encoding bolt. I think I finally figured it out. I think I had to just turn my volume down. I think it was just way too much for um, uh, the computer to be handling, which is weird because I've always had it at the same volume I've always had. But I guess something's kind of changed. Uh, anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I'll have the round three uh, results probably up by Wednesday. I've got a lot of videos to kind of do. Hell, this was supposed to be out yesterday, and I still got today's what if and who would win to do. <laughs> and I got to pre record my uh, Lantern video and the other what if for tomorrow. So I got a lot of videos to do. Uh, but until then, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you folks next time. Hit that button if you want to be notified. Later.